And ladies and gentlemen, Robert Roy here, WealthBuildersHQ.com. I wanted to go over a strategy today, a particular trade setup that we utilize in a segment called Trade with Rob. And it is the one trade setup that I look for over and over and over and over again. I will trade this as often as I can find it, utilizing the rules that I'm going to share with you here today. All right. But as we get into that, guys, if you're not already following along with the things that we do, here's the various uh, platforms that you could find us on from YouTube to Instagram to Twitter and so forth. Our podcast, there's our blog. Take advantage of some of the other resources that we have out there. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I have a chart right here of Micron MU. And if I go ahead and snap some uh, lines on there to show you draw some lines there to show you what we did here very first thing is this trade will always start with a fibonacci you never have to worry about that it's done for you i've already got this taken care of all you're focused on is the setup i just want to share with you what's happened here we had this nice move up and let me bring it in just a little bit more all right so you can see the beginning of the, the move right here. The, the zeros, the numbers are on the left-hand side there. What happened was we broke through. You grab a drawing tool. We broke through with a wick right here. So when you get a breakout trade, right, that wick broke through. There are traders going, ooh, I'm in, and they're jumping all over it. And where's Rob? Back here in position number one in the chair, sitting like this, cannot reach the keyboard, trade cannot be placed. I'm just keeping my eye on what's happening there. Right? I'm looking for a break and a fail. The, the overall move was bearish. That happened in here. I'm looking for a move back up and a fail. That's what, in, in an ideal world, what I'd like to see happen. So the next time we came back down to that level again, what happened? One, two days in a row. Boom, we broke through and snapped right back inside. We did it yet again. Now, with all of that information now in your head, You've already seen how often this has happened. What would make you believe, actually it did it right here too, that candle, but what would make you believe on that candle that this one was gonna actually fail? It wasn't. So unless you take every one of those trades anticipating that sooner or later one will fail, it's a guessing game to me in a big part, not all, but you've got less odds on your side by taking the breakout. So what am I looking for? I am looking for a retest of that zero line once it breaks, in this case, to the downside, right? When it broke, boom. So if I was, if I was sitting in my chair, let's say on this day right here, right? This would have put me at position number one in the chair, back here. Once we broke and closed below, for this particular stock, I would have gone from position number one to position number two. Now I'm paying attention. I'm not trading it yet. I am paying attention. But Rob, you missed the breakout. But then how do you tell me you didn't miss the breakout here and here? But I knew, no, no, I knew on this one it was a breakout. And I knew these were fake. Maybe, maybe you're better than I am. I can't figure that out for, with certainty. But I can tell you with a higher probability that if we get a retest of this fib line, this, this one we closed above, here we broke down and closed down here and now where are we we're sitting right here almost at that retest if i can get that to happen i've got a greater chance of being right in this trade that's really what i want is put the odds in my favor i want to be the batter the baseball batter that gets on the on base batting 330 340 350 that's who i want to be home runs are awesome but to me swinging for the fence every time i get up means i'm going to strike out a lot too I want to be consistent over and over, getting on base, getting on base, getting on base. I want to find a trade that works, find it that works, find it that works. I want a higher probability of being right. I'll take less profit for that, but I'll be on base much more often and ultimately wind up more profitable because of it. Okay, so what I'm looking for now is this. In an ideal world, in an ideal world, we would see the trade come up and close here, when I say here, just below this zero line which in this case is 75.41, uh, 76.41, just below that level. Then it's going to fail. Now that's me. You may say, Rob, if it tags, my entry rule is if it tags that line intraday and moves down, I'm taking a bearish trade, I'm buying a put, I'm shorting the stock, you go for it. Whatever risk profile is for you, that's what you need to trade. You don't trade like Rob because you're not Rob. 
right? You trade the way you trade. Mary, Bill, Jim, Frank, whoever, you know, Fred Flintstone, whatever your name is, you trade like you, right? And I want to make sure that you're trading within your own personal risk profile and risk tolerance. So once we get that close up there, that is where the trade with Rob trade comes in play. All right, uh, let me do it this way. Let's escape out of that. Let's give me a little bigger view. And let me start bringing it back in where I could see. Nope, that's, I'm going to have to keep it right here. So once we get that kiss and it comes back up to the 76.41 and rolls over, I'm looking at this. And what you're going to see in a trade with Rob is just what you're looking at right here. You're going to see targets and stops. They may not be identified as target one and target two or stop. But you'll know by colors and by the way I lay it out exact, and how I talk about it in the video exactly what I'm referring to. So my very first target, if I take this trade, let's say that I'm taking two contracts just for simplicity purpose. If I'm taking two contracts and it, of my options, I'm buying puts, and it rolls over, I'm going to buy those two contracts. My first target is 74.25. That is where I'm selling half of my position. But Rob, what if I only took one contract? Then you sell the whole position there. Trade is over for you. You're done. You're back to position number one in the chair. See, once I get that kiss and it test that 76.41 and fails, I'm in position number three, which is where I'm leaning forward and I'm actually placing that trade. That's position number three in the chair. So your very first target, you sell half of the trade at 74 and a quarter. 71.75 is the second target. You sell the second half of your trade and you're completely out. Rob, that's great if it works in my direction. What if it fails? Well, if you're wrong and you will be, really, even with your setup? Uh, yeah, even with my setup. Anybody that tells you they're never wrong lies. Let's say that you got in this trade right here and it goes against you. My stop is up here. It's going to take me out of the trade at 77 half. That's it. Trade is over. You sell the full contracts. You had, if you had two, you sell two. If you had 20, you sell 20. You have one, you sell one. That's it. You just exit out of that trade, right? So that's the major component of it. The other piece that I want to add to that is let's say we do take the trade and it does move in our direction. It starts working bearish right? And starts moving to the downside. Well, if we get down to 74 and a quarter, we take our first target, our first half of the trade, we're exiting that. You will then move your stop down to a break even. Well, actually below break even in this case. What does that mean? I don't want this to cost anything. So if I'm wrong, I'm going to, and let's say the stock was at $75 when I got in, I'm just picking a number. I want my, my stop to be somewhere above $75. In other words, I mean, uh, below rather, $75. We're in a bearish trade. I want to below that $75. In other words, if it makes it, if it starts to come back up again, I want to be taken out of that trade and still be profitable on the second half, right? So you would adjust your initial stop once your first target is hit. If it continues down, hits the second target, bingo, bingo, the whole trade is done. You took profit on both legs and you call it a day. Will that happen on every trade? No. Is there a high probability on this setup? There is based on your trading rules, right? Is there some skill still required in, in trading, even though I'm giving you all the details of the trade? Absolutely. There's an old song, Kenny Rogers, know when to fold them, know, know when to hold them, know when to fold them, right? You've got to know when it's time to exit out of this trade, when it's time to uh, take your, your profits and call it a day, or take your licks and call it a day, right? It's no different. Right, so the zero line breakout trade, folks, what we'll do in each one of the trades is on, which is on YouTube, we will reference each one of the trades in the show notes and I'll talk about it. Check the description down below for the video that will show you how to trade this or something like that. My video guy will decide where we're going to put it on the video, whether it pops up on the screen or it's in the notes or whatever it is. But make sure you come back to this video again and again and look for ways to trade the zero line breakout. It's a Fibonacci trade setup that is absolutely outstanding. We've had crushing results so far in the last two months that I've been doing these and you go check the YouTube videos. We've only had two of them go against us. Three that we didn't take, the rest were trades that moved in our direction, right? So with that, ladies and gentlemen, make it a profitable day. Stay focused on the quest to becoming a great trader. Keep crushing it and remember, you're just one trade away. I will see all of you at our next update. Take care, folks. See you soon. Bye for now.